Welcome back to Goat Golf Owls, guys. I'm thrilled, ecstatic to welcome a qualified barrister, esteemed golf author, the general manager of Faldo Design for 15 years, and the founder of Global Golf for Cancer. Welcome, Nick Edmonds. Thank you, and it's a privilege to be talking to you, Sean. It's excellent. Viewers, I'm, I'm pretty proud to announce that Nick with all his vast experience and knowledge of golf in Scotland, has decided to design the home of golf, Goat Signature Golf Course, in support of Global Golf for Cancer. Thanks, Nick. That, we are incredibly excited to go through your favourite favorite 18 links goals, holes in Scotland. I think that'll be a labour of love, sure. 100%. So, Nick, as we get going, I've just got a couple of questions just to talk you through the vast experience you've had in the golf industry. So, I understand after you... you qualified and started practicing criminal law as a barrister you were sidetracked um, and you ended up writing a golf publication can you tell us a little bit about that yeah somebody threw me a curveball and as I say to people I uh, very early in my legal career switched the, from the from the ninth from the bar to the 19th hole uh, I should have been focused on the 18 holes you're quite right um no I, I was in asked to write a, a book about golf courses. The, the publisher knew that I had, uh, in relatively short life up till then, a, a good experience of golf around Great Britain and Ireland. And I guess the publisher took a bit of a punt that, that I, could, I could write and uh, express myself about these, these golf courses all through the British Isles. And so following the fairways came out in 1987. I was all of 26 at the time. But the book went well, and as the book went well, I guess my legal career went further behind me because I got asked to do other golfing publications. Following the Fairways itself uh, had 13 iterations or 13 editions, and so that went all the way up to the year 2000. And in between those years, I started writing for Lynx magazine, which I still do uh, on golf courses of Great Britain and Ireland. I also uh, wrote about the golfing year, did nine golf yearbooks and various, uh, a few other golfing publications during that period of time, as I say, up until about the year 2000, when, when writing about golf was my principal activity and passion. Amazing, it's absolutely amazing. Just, um, just one little aspect of your golf writing, I think that you've said to us your latest little accreditation was working with David Cannon on a, on a Seve Ballesteros book. Well, Dave, David Cannon, who's probably the foremost golf photographer in the world, uh, has been a friend for probably the best part of 30 plus years. Uh, we started writing um, the golfing yearbooks together and uh, we've always kept very, much, very, very closely in touch. And David uh, is a bit of an expert on, uh, certainly a photographic expert on, on the life and times of Seve Ballesteros. And with it being sadly, 10 years of Seve's passing in 2021. Uh, the RNA, the European Tour, they and Seve's family asked if uh, David could, could put together a golf book. Seve's life through the lens, as the book is, is called. And so essentially a photographic book de detailing the life of Seve. I work with David in terms of writing the captions and editing a, a few of the essays that that various people contributed um, and it's it's as I say essentially a, 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 it's a wonderful coffee table photographic book that celebrates the life of Seve our greatest golfing icon certainly in Europe uh, without a doubt I mean exactly you can't ex explain it better an absolute icon the next little chapter let's call it the next chapter of your life is um, I must be honest when I'm I'm extremely envious when when we, we talk on this chapter because the, the, the man we're talking about there, well, I should say a sir, um, is, a, is an idol of mine. I've been following him from his, watched obviously him from the, from the early 80s. He's absolute, I mean, what he's provided for golf is incredible. And, 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 and you rightly say, he's certainly the best ever golfer that Great Britain has produced. Tell us about your role at um, Nick Felder Design. Yes, well, uh, I did say that my first, golf book came out in 1987 I don't want to suggest it's a coincidence that Nick won his first major championship in 1987 but that that's just a, just a nice fact I first met Nick in 1993 uh, I met him through his then manager we kept in touch and when Nick uh, set up set up 
on his own with that manager three or four years later. Um, the manager then knew of my golf writing and my passion for golf courses. He knew of my legal background. And he asked me to look at some golf course design contracts that, that were being presented to Nick just as his playing career was moving towards its, its autumn. Um, so I looked at those contracts. I could see that Nick was passionate about golf course design. And so it led to various discussions about should Nick set up his own golf course design business? And well, Nick was, Nick was very keen to do that. So I guess being in the right place at the right time, I was there when Fowler Design began in, in around about 1997. And I, had the privilege, privilege certainly of managing his his design business and growing it, developing it for 15 years exactly, uh, up, up until 2012. And we worked to, around the world. I mean, I, I'm very proud. I probably the thing I'm most proud of is the fact that Fowler Design did design, create golf courses in all six continents and at some extraordinary venues from places like Cambodia and Vietnam and Asia to Australia to we worked in South America, we did a number of courses in, in the US and unsurprisingly in, in Europe as well. And um, as somebody who loves travel and who loves golf, to, to have the privilege of, of running his golf course design business was, was, was fabulous. And I, I suppose the thing we, in terms of how it, how, what separated Felder Design from a number of its competitors, we would emphasize the the attributes that that made Nick a very distinctive individual and certainly a very distinctive golfer in terms of his strategic approach to 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 playing golf, the way Nick plotted his way around golf courses, we could we we certainly would emphasise that Nick's golf courses were very strategic, uh, and they were very international in their flavour as well. And so, of course, Nick's passion for links golf came through in 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 his design ideas as well. Just on, on the design side, I just again on all of my research, I'm just I understand yep. that you you the Felder Design had started a project in South Africa, but but cut and it but never quite materialized. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? That's right. I mean, it's it's certainly it was the, the project was called Lara Pose, which was named for a for a farm on the coast, uh, very close. I say very close, close to Port Alfred that sort of area, not too far from Port Elizabeth. Um, it was one of the one of the most spectacular sites I think I, I ever saw. It was it was literally the, the the golf course, the layout occupied two very separate levels. And then the third level was the ocean. Um, and the terrain was perfect. It was mildly undulating, naturally mildly undulating and the variety of, of trees, but it was also affected by the wind. So of course, strategic design elements would, would be amplified by, uh, by the elements and um, it was just a, would have been a beautiful place to have uh, for, to have done our first project in Africa. In the end we ended up doing a project near uh, near the pyramids in in Cairo so completely the wrong end of, uh, of Africa well wrong end in terms of, <laughs> of what we were hoping for La Repose but um, Larapose would have been special. It was one of those that 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 got away. I mean, that's the same with every golf course design business. You've you've got to value the ones that that did materialise, but of course you're going to have some regrets about those that didn't make it. And Larapose in South Africa would have been uh, a very special project to have added to our portfolio. Amazing, amazing. So if if um well if a course of Felder design ever materialises in, in South Africa, just let Nick know that I'm happy to wield the spade with wherever he needs me. <laughs> I'll let him know, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Nick, um, the, the last uh, chapter, I suppose, I want to talk to you before we move on to the Home of Gold Signature course is what it's all about. And, and what it, what's really intrigued me now, and I'd love to understand the background of it, is that you had the concept of global goal for cancer well before you actually suffered from cancer. How did, how did that come about? Yes, that's, I suppose, the biggest irony of Global Golf for Cancer is it, it, it very much centers on the number four, four being a significant number in, in, in cancer uh, and four being, for the reasons every golfer knows, a, a hugely relevant number within golf. How it came about is that after um, 15 years of managing Fowler Design, I guess I was looking for 
one more challenge within the within the golfing world and i i wasn't sure what it would be and whilst i was deliberating i went for a climb i went for a trek in the himalayas and to cut a long story short i came i came back with 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 the it was such an inspirational trek it was to raise funds for uh, uh, a wonderful uk cancer charity and it it certainly changed the the experience there changed my life that i came back wanting to um develop a develop a a campaign an idea that linked golf with cancer and the idea i came back with was this again focusing on this number four thinking how can i link golf with cancer ultimately that ended up with global golf for cancer uh, as the name of the campaign I, I i mentioned the irony was that the one thing that initially stopped me taking the, the idea forward was because not having had cancer i could imagine sitting down with some some fairly conservative golf clubs asking them to support a campaign and inevitably i i know they'd be thinking well you haven't had cancer um why are you doing it or, or just just questioning it and i don't mean that in, in, a, in a sinister way just the fact was i the most credible campaigner and so whilst the last thing i wanted was cancer uh, um when my first cancer developed that that certainly i guess gave me credibility and it also certainly gave me uh added determination to take this forward i mentioned the word irony at the beginning of this and, and yes the irony is I've, I've now had cancer exactly four times so Maybe my mantra should be four and no more, Sean. I like it. I'm and so touching wood at the same time. Yeah, the last yeah. the last cancer episode was three and a half years ago. I, I certainly hope that's just four and no more, that's for sure. And you've, you've certainly suffered enough as it is now. Nick, just on that, so again, I mean, we could talk about this all day and I'd love to, but um, one thing, when, some of the documentation you sent me, one thing that struck me, which is so admirable, is that you, the, the, the whole essence behind it is it's not you're not walking around with a, with a begging bowl it's 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 a it's a genuine call for awareness and um giving people the opportunity if they feel they can or able to support that they will get involved in some shape and form you know and it doesn't have to be for directly with global golf for cancer i think it's admirable it's amazing well it's if you if you if you take it down to its essence what the global golf cancer campaign is about uh, and I guess the the, the, uh, the, um, the very name of Global Golf for Cancer probably explains it as much as it's getting the global the global golfing community to support cancer fighters and and whether a cancer fighter to me is somebody who is literally fighting cancer, somebody who's battling cancer, but also the wonderful organisations around the world that are fighting cancer in various ways, whether it's fighting breast cancer, whether it's supporting children's cancer, whether it's looking for uh, uh, help with cancer support, cancer research, there's so many facets to cancer. And I thought golf is such a global game. Cancer sadly is a global phenomenon. Therefore, if the golfing community of which we're 60 million strong, if we all did a bit to help or a bit more to help fight cancer, what a massive difference that could make. And uh, if 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 I can just very quickly show you something, so this flag, the Global Golf Cancer flag, which flies that way around, even yeah. well, you're in South Africa, you're in the other hemisphere. I can yeah, tell yeah, you. Okay. <laughs> uh, but this this flag, this four flag, uh, as you say, Global Golf Cancer, and the strap line says, "Flying the flag for cancer fighters worldwide." This flag is flying just on fourth holes, on special dates and occasions on golf courses all around the world, again, on the six continents. And yes, this flag is flying for, for cancer fighters of all sorts. And I think there are a number of reasons why I think the campaign works, but certainly one of them is the fact that it, by being a campaign rather than a specific charity, we're not, we're not competing with other charities. Indeed, we're, I always say we're complementing the work of charities. And if a golf club said, well, we can't fly this flag because we support this charity, I say, you fly the flag uh, as well. Fly the flag as well and support that charity because we're not we're not building hospitals. We're just trying to drive the golf community into doing more to support various wonderful cancer causes of which there are so many all around the world. That's amazing, Nick. Can I just ask you just to hold that flag up for a second or two, a little higher? Just we just get a nice clear shot of it. So 
Just Absolutely. You can see exactly what it does. A little higher if you can. Sorry, I took this. It's my screen. But uh, oh, sorry. there you go. How about but, that? There, oh, there we no, go. No, even Perfect. better, it's covering me. <laughs> better. That's amazing. Thanks for that, Nick. So you, you do see that there are, if, if, I, if I show you down here, so this is the campaign, Global Golf for Cancer. There's the number four. There is a, there is a story behind that number four, which I won't go into this moment, but you, you, you notice there are three different cancer charity logos uh, down here, okay. including very proudly the Savvy Ballesteros Foundation. Um, again, that's a long story, but nobody is more proud than yours truly that, that we're able to help shine a light on the wonderful work that the Sevi Ballesteros Foundation does for helping rid the world of brain cancer. Um, the other two charities, one is a UK cancer charity, which does wonders in the world of cancer research. And the other was a South African charity. Listeners will be familiar with. That's the charity that um, Sandy Cipriano founded, uh, who I've got to know very well. Um, and, and as you well know, they support a huge number of children every month with all their medical expenses, all their cancer medical expenses. And so to be able to help support their efforts on a global, with a global, with a global platform, that's something I'm, I'm very proud of and, and just thrilled to be involved with. As you should be, incredible. Just sorry, Nick, I think we just lost a bit of connection, so I don't think we recorded, but uh, you okay. obviously, the, no, it's the, I just want to alert the, the audience that the last flag is the, is the Cupcakes of Hope that's based in South Africa, and that's what Nick was referring to when he talks about raising funds. That was the, the last, yeah, logo on the, this side of that flag, yeah. All right, amazing. I was actually going to ask you about Cupcakes of Hope, but thanks for explaining that. Nick, before we go, I've just got a couple of thanks. Yeah. That, um, obviously, I want to thank the viewers because um, without them watching, we're not really creating any awareness. So thank you for watching, guys, and you're very welcome to share this video. Um, if you want to see and follow the series with Nick as we head on to the Home of Golf signature course in support of Global Golf for Cancer, please consider subscribing to Goat Golf Holes on YouTube. Again, it's all about awareness. And then certainly follow Global Golf for for cancer and goat golf holes on your favorite social media platform. All the latest news and updates appear there. And um, there's two thanks. I am I understand that, uh, well, David Cannon will certainly uh, be providing some footage, which we really thank him. And a good friend of mine, Kevin Murray, who's also an esteemed photographer, has already provided uh, incredible coverage of the golf courses. So we thank them personally. And then certainly the hugest thanks goes to Nick. Um, I um, thoroughly enjoyed talking to you today, and I'm super excited to get cracking on the Home of Golf Signature course in support of Global Golf Cancer. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Sean.